Hey everybody, welcome to Jeep Comic Collector. This is episode number 249. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at this omnibus that I bought. Uh, pretty excited about this when I ordered it and we'll go through it and go through my impressions and, and all that kind of stuff. And how much I paid for it. I didn't pay the 150 bucks for it. I'll tell you that right now. Um, but first, we're going to take a look at uh, Mickey Mouse in this hardcover book that I got. So uh, we're going to take a look at those. I'm just going to switch over to the other camera. Uh, thanks for being here today. And uh, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much. Where's my thing? Sorry, I gotta, I gotta pull up this other software in order to change cameras. It's a little, a little confusing sometimes where to find it. There we are. All right, so let me put this aside for now. And <clears throat> so I've got a, the reason this is in here is, is is just marking my place. I haven't read the whole thing yet. <laughs> Uh, so I got this off Amazon. It was on sale. This is a volume of the uh, Disney Master Series that I've, I've, sh I've shown one or two before. Oh, this is volume... ...21, I believe this is 21. Um, so I'd skipped this one earlier. I don't always get them in the order they come out. But, uh, yeah, I was looking around on Amazon, and I was ordering, I forget what I was ordering, something from my mom. Um, and I needed to uh, uh, get to a certain price in order for the, whatever that item was to ship for free. So, uh, so I came across this. It was on sale for, I think, $18, $17.95, something like that. Um, which is a really good deal for these. The new ones, I think, are running about 30 bucks, which is getting pretty expensive. I don't know if I'll keep getting them unless they're on sale. Um, sometimes they have a pre-order price. It's a little bit cheaper, but, uh, yeah, for for yeah, less than 20 bucks, yeah, that I'll grab it for that. So um, so this is a Mickey Mouse, the Monstro of Sawtooth Mountain is the title. And basically, it's kind of a series within the Master Series where they're collecting the Paul Murray uh, serials from Walt Disney, Walt Disney Comics and Stories. Um, the ser Mickey Mouse serials that ran in the back usually uh, that we could most of them were continued on for like three episodes. And if you're like me, when you were a kid, you never really paid much attention to those because you didn't have much of a chance of getting the other episodes they were you know the the main outlet for those uh books were the uh the the ones packaged in the bags for the toy stores and you couldn't just buy the issues you wanted so it was hit or miss whether you were going to find the the future episodes you know you, I, I loved them for the donald duck stories but the mickey mouse stories were always like i'm how am I ever going to read the le the beginning or the ending or the of the stories? So, so these are cool for me to just read through. Um, yeah, yeah. The the Paul Murray. I've I've read earlier issues of this, and uh, usually I'll just sit down and I'll read it because I'm excited about it, and 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 then I I feel a little bit let down because I haven't. Um, do I want to say I haven't I don't I didn't really feel like I got my money's worth out of it you know because I sit there I read through it and the Mickey and Mickey Mouse serials that Palmer did they just kind of go along the artwork is just kind of all the same there's never any like dynamic art there's never uh you know they're they're all just they just all kind of plot along as a mystery or, or an adventure and uh they're amusing, but they're when you read them all in a row like that, they don't really work that well. Um, so for what I've been doing for this book is I've been reading one chapter of one serial a day. 
So it only takes me a couple minutes to read through the, you know, an eight, eight or ten pages, whatever they are. And uh, I'm enjoying it a lot more that way. Um, uh, to see what happens next and give me a little bit of a suspense to it instead of it just kind of plodding along. Um, so the first, first story in here... Uh, kind of got a neat twist. Uh, Mickey and Goofy are are trying to get away from Chief O'Hara because they think they want to go on vacation and they think he's ch he's trying to catch them to make them work on a case. And uh, so uh, an outlaw sees them uh, being chased by the chief of police so he thinks they're outlaws and tries to bring them in into their gang. And uh, um, so it, it's got an interesting start to it. It's pretty neat. It's called the Fantastic Fog, and uh, so that that one was pretty interesting. It was neat. Uh, Gyro Gearloose uh, shows up as a supporting character, um, which is a bit unusual. He didn't, you know, venture out of the Duck comics very much, but uh, once in a while he'll show up in a Mickey a Mickey story, and then. Uh, the next one is the threat of the stone eaters, and uh, I think I've read this one before. Um, they uh, they they go to investigate and in a disappearance of an archaeologist or something, and and run across a bad guy who has captured uh, stone eating termites and going to use them to. Uh, blackmail cities into paying him because so, otherwise he'll release the termites and and so they have to deal with that um, and then they have the monster of Sawtooth Mountain where a relative of Chief O'Hara's is having problems at his ski resort with a uh, supposedly a monster is terrorizing the uh, um, the resort and it, it turns out to actually be uh pete behind it but he doesn't actually show up until uh the third or the last chapter so it's kind of it's actually kind of a surprise usually when you know you see pete coming a mile away in these serials but that one because he showed up so late you didn't really uh it took you by surprise a little bit so and then you have the alaskan adventure where they find a hidden a tropical valley in Alaska that's uh, heated by um, hot springs. That's the one I just got done reading. And then the uh, there's one called Pineapple Poachers where obviously they go to Hawaii or some such place. And the Trail to Treasure. Um, I don't think that one was actually a serial. I think that was a one-shot story. Yeah. They go into some one shots. So, it, well, Disney comics and stories did have a few one shot stories. And then there's something called Mickey's Strange Mission, and looks like he got some kind of version of Pete uh, posing as a rich person or something, or perhaps it's just a a relative or something. And. and and it continues uh, something called the Moon Blot Plot. Outer Space, Gyro Gear Loose again. And then there's an article in the back about Paul Murray. Um, so one of the things that one of the things I don't like about these volumes is, depending on who the creator was, they have the same biography in the back. Um, I don't need the same biography over and over again. You know. Uh, Give me a checklist. Give me a something else in that spot. You know, some sketch work or, or something. I don't know. But uh, I, I just don't like them using the same pages over again like that. But yeah, you know, for the for the deal I got for the book, uh, really nice, nice. Amazon did uh, ship me a defective copy a little bit. And I don't know if you can still see it in here. I think it's flattened out. But there was a good chunk of pages that were folded over like this when I got it inside the book. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how they got that way. But, uh, yeah, it wasn't that big of a deal. I just folded them back. It's not nothing to worry about. So, very cool. Very happy to get that and continue my Disney collection. 
Uh, and then we have this omnibus. Now I discovered, like normally I, 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 I've never had any interest in the omnibus collections. Um, it's a cool concept if you want like all this stories of a character or something, I guess. Um, but at $150 plus price point for most of the books, I'm, yeah, I'm nowhere interested. Um, uh, but that channel I told you about a while back where they, they review the books and the trade paperbacks and all that, um, they were reviewing the newest book in this series that just came out from 1960, reprints 1964 stories. And, uh, I, I wasn't aware of this series. So this is, this series is very close to what I would want an Omnibus to series to be. Um, <clears throat> so I jumped online and, uh, and the, the name of the, uh, mm, the name of the channel is Near Mint Collectibles or something like that. Uh, but that's all they do is, is review the books. And, uh, Um, so anyway, I got excited because this, to me, this what this does is it reprints all the Marvel books that they came out with in August of 1961. And I thought, well, that's a cool concept. It's all just a, it's like a time capsule little thing, you know. And I thought, and my dream series would be a cover a set of hardcover books that actually started like when Marvel started in 1939 and just published everything that they ever did chronologically. I would love that series. I would be all over that series. That might be a series I would pay the 150 bucks for just to have it. But I don't know. They would, you know. Um, this one I actually paid. I got on eBay and And it does not tell me what I paid for it on here. It was under $50. It was, with shipping, it was like $47, $48, something like that. I thought, I thought this had the price on it, but it doesn't. Um, but anyway, it was right around there. And uh, I had bid on another one um, that I should have won a couple days ago. And uh, whoever the seller was canceled it just as it was ending so that I wouldn't win so he didn't have to pick, give it to me at the price I was winning it at and that would have came in at 50 bucks too so it wasn't it still wasn't a bad price but for whatever reason that wasn't enough for him and he, whoever it was I can't even find who it was because they just took the auction down um so there's no record of it they just uh otherwise I'd reveal him as a bad seller but I, I can't even I can't even do that so He's just, uh, you know, I mean, if you don't want to sell it for that price, don't put it up for that price. Jerk. <laughs> but I'm actually kind of glad I didn't get it because there are, there is something about this series that I don't like. So, like I said, I would love to see this turned into a series where it was just a monthly series. But instead what they're doing is they spotlight one month out of each year. So this was 1961, August, because that's when the Fantastic Four came out. So this is the month that Fantastic Four number one came out. But to make an omnibus out of it, they 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 include everything that was published uh, that year. So you got Kathy, Amazing Adventures, Journey into a Mystery, Life with Millie, Patsy Walker, Tales to Astonish, Kid Colt, Tales of Suspense, Strange Tales, Millie the Model, Linda Carter, Student Nurse, Fantastic Four, Journey into Mystery, Love Romances, Amazing Adult Fantasy, Gunsmoke Western, Teenage Romance, Rawhide Kid, and Patsy and Hetty. So, and some of those weren't actually published in that month. It says in the introduction that they, they included a couple other ones. So, to in, in order to include all the titles that were being published at that time. Um, so, this is the actual hardcover take with artwork from the series. Uh, and then this is the, the dust jacket. Nice heavy dust jacket, too. They Usually dust jackets are kind of cheap. This is nice thick paper. Um, they, they, they did a good job in the, in the production of the book. Um, but anyway, like I said, I would love to see an ongoing series that just reprints everything chronologically instead of it being chronologically by character or issue number. I want to see 
you know, it start with Marvel Comics number one, or 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 even Amazing, uh, whatever the giveaway was, where some submariner debuted, um, even though that wasn't a Marvel comic. Um, and then just keep going forward. Every, you know, every few months release a new book or something that that publishes everything that they've ever published. That would be a series I would be interested in. So the next volume after this one is, is like a month in 1962 when like Spider-Man came out or something. One of the other characters. The most recent one is 1964 and it features Daredevil. Uh, the month that Daredevil came out. Um, so apparently they're going to keep doing that. And, and I, I would much rather see like the series I talked about. But uh, and for 50, even for 50 bucks, you know, at, at the prices I pay for comics, yeah, I could get up to 150 comics for that. So, um, yeah, I'm glad I've got this. And I'll definitely probably pick up the other ones as well, just because it's as close to what I want as I, as I can get. But, uh, so I was a little disappointed, um... But they do include like the text stories and, uh, uh, you know, if there's letters pages and things like that, they usually include those. Uh, so there's a, a couple pages of introduction here by Tom Brevoort. Um, and then it just starts, you know, reprinting the, the comics. And uh, so you start off with Kathy. And it, it tells the credits down below of the the on, on the pages of who the writers were and, and stuff of the different stories so it tells you like the cover credits here underneath the cover and it tells you this story's credits under the first page of the story um so a very cool book i just wish there were more of them <laughs> and that they were doing them in order regardless of whether it was a debut of of a uh um <clears throat> you know uh, of, a, of a main character or not. Uh, so, uh, Kathy was actually written by Stan Lee, uh, penciled by Stan Goldberg, inked by George Klein. Looks like the whole issue was had the same creative team. And it just looks like it's going to be a fun book. I haven't read any of it yet. Um, Amazing Adventures, you know, covered by Jack Kirby. Uh, and George Klein, uh, the, the Serpo, the creature who crushed the earth, again written by Stan Lee and uh, Larry Lieber, his brother, and then pencils by Jack Kirby, inks by George Klein. So, so you know, stellar, stellar creative teams. Just, this would be so cool to have as an ongoing series rather than just a, a time capsule of that particular year. Um, but at the same time, it, I can't wait to read these. these they, they, they look awesome. Look at this, the spider strikes. Uh, they're, just, they're just cool. Just great stuff, you know. And it, it, yeah, yeah, how many issues were in here? There's 5, 10, 15, yeah, there are 19 issues reprinted in here. And, and unfortunately, you know, it doesn't include any of the ads or anything like a facsimile does. I'd, I'd love to... I, that, that my dream, my dream series, like I said, would be like I talked about, but with, with the ads, with it actually being kind of a facsimile of what the whole comic was, rather than just the, the stories and the text pieces. Um, I think when I saw the review of the 1964 one that just came out, there was a. Uh, I think I saw a house ad in that once when he was paging through it. Um, so probably there we go. Life with Millie that was also written by Stan Lee. Stan Lee apparently wrote a lot back in those days. Um, we got uh, Linda Carter. Starring in a pinup in in two, in in Millie, the model, or life with Millie. So a little bit of a crossover there. Patsy Walker, again written by Stanley, artist Al Hartley. 
So a lot of the, the teenage romance Archie type books uh, were being published right around that time when they came out with Fantastic Four number one. Uh, Tales to Astonish. I was captured by a creature from Krogar. Again, uh, plot by Stan Lee, uh, script by Larry Lieber. There's a cool splash panel, The Gypsy's Revenge by Don Heck. And Where Lurks the Ghost by Steve Ditko and Stanley. Uh, Kid Cold Outlaw, covered by Jack Kirby. Uh, artist on the story is Jack Keller. Ayers on this backup story. And Jack Keller again on the Kid Colt story. All on, and all this is written by Stanley. Um, Tales of Suspense. Got Jack Kirby cover. Uh, penciler on the story too. I entered the dimension of doom. Uh, Again, with all the monster stories, it was uh, plotted by Stan Lee, but, but scripted by his brother, Larry. Creature from the Black Bog. Um, this one was actually written by Stan Lee with uh, Steve Ditko doing the art. It's interesting to see Steve Ditko's art on these stories because um, the the human characters all look like they they you know they just stepped out of a Spider-Man story, <laughs> out of an early Spider-Man story because of his his uh, unique style of of drawing people back then. And uh, we've got a dropping elevator going down. Got uh, Paul Reinman did the art on this one. And the changeling. Board with the present, want to get away from it all? And come with us into the future. There in the world of tomorrow you will discover that things are not always the way they appear. No, not always the way they appear. Uh, pencils by Jack Kirby. Plot by Stan Lee. Script by Larry Lieber. So here you got... Uh, so this looks like a lot like the... Invisible Woman there, very much drawn the same style. Uh, Strange Tales, uh, Orgo the Unconquerable, uh, pencils by Jack Kirby on the cover, and on the story as well, inks by Dad Dick Ayers on the story. Oh wait, what happened in the future? <laughs> Oh well, have to read it and find out, I guess. And a thousand years later, Stan Lee, Steve Ditko. So, you know, this book's just filled with Kirby art, Ditko art, Stan Lee writing everything in sight. Uh, Paul Reinman on some of the backups. Just, just a... Uh, uh, who's who of who worked at Marvel back then? Um, Stan Goldberg, you know, doing the, the the girl books.
And these were in these books it used a lot of uh like the Katie Keene style thing where they like all these different outfits are designed by uh readers. They were submitted by by readers. Um and then they they're credited, you know, in the little capsules within the story. Or even the hairdos um are uh are credited. Oh, I got Linda Carter, student nurse, uh, cover artist L. Hartley, uh, and Stanley wrote this one too. So, you know, if you're a strictly a superhero fan, probably not the book for you. <laughs> Here's Fantastic Four, though. Jack Kirby, of course, and Stan Lee. Uh, it was inked by George Klein throughout, including the, the cover. And of course, you know, everybody's read this story, so um, I'm sure I have, I probably have half a dozen different uh, reprints of that story of some place or another. Uh, and then the of course, they meet the Mole Man in the second story. And then you get Journey into Mystery. Now, this was before they created Thor, so that we're still doing uh, monster books at this point. Uh, so you got Jack Kirby, Dick Ayers on the cover. And uh, same as the other, the other monster stories. Plot by Stan Lee, with script by Larry Lieber. And then uh, Jack Kirby and Dick Ayers did the art chores on this one. And I don't see any credits for the text stories. Um, so I wonder if I wonder if Stanley wrote those as well. He probably did. I wonder if they they credit them at all in the in. Uh, <clears throat> No, the uh, table of contents is just the, the stories, titles. They don't, uh, they don't show credits in the table of contents. So, uh, Mechanical Men by Stanley and Steve Ditko. And Don Heck did the art on this one. Forever is a long, long time. And it's always fascinating to me to look at these that like because this looks a lot like Tony Stark, right? Or his dad, <laughs> or maybe what his dad would look like. Um, it's just uh, it's 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 funny to, to think how those yeah you know, they kind of drew those characters as one shots, but then they use that same the same faces in the later uh, stories. Sorry, Tape Man just just fell apart. <laughs> He's rolling down the down here onto the comet. I don't want to get tape snags on this. Um, and to embrace a dream. So they don't actually know who drew this one. It is signed by Stan Lee as the writer. Uh, and they've identified the inker as Vince Coletta. But they don't know who penciled it. It does look a little bit different style compared to the other stories that, that we've been going through in here. Uh, and then we have Amazing Adult Fantasy number 7 before Spider-Man came along. This magazine respects your intelligence. Covered by Steve Ditko. Uh, art by Steve Ditko as well. So just, you know, classic Ditko, classic Kirby. Just great stuff. Witch Hunt. And Kid Cold Outlaw. Let me take a look at that. Sorry, I was 
my mind was wandering because I just had a message pop up to pay my phone bill. <laughs> Gunsmoke Western, number 67. Jack Kirby and Dick Ayers on Kid Colt. Montana Brown, Gunslinger Without Fear. I've never heard of Montana Brown. I don't know if he was a uh, ongoing character or just a one-shot. We called him a wolf. Somewhere wait the rustlers. Teenager Romance by Jack Kirby. That's actually a Jack Kirby cover. And this is Jack Kirby as well. So he could be versatile back in the day. And here's another one written by Stan Lee, but they don't know who did the pencils. Looks like it might be the same as that other story. It was also inked by Vince Coletta. And here's Don Heck on this story. And Jack Kirby and Vince Coletta on this one. Rawhide Kid, uh, covered by Jack Kirby and Dick Ayers. And so is the story. The Bat Strikes. It's the Bat. I knew we'd meet sooner or later in a shootout showdown. Even the Rawhide Kid can't stop the Bat. <sighs> I have a great love of the old Marvel Westerns. <laughs> the Man Who Robbed the Express by Stan Lee and Dick Ayers did pencils and inks on this one. Those Who Live by the Gun starring the Rawhide Kid. Jack Kirby and Dick Ayers. And Patsy and Hetty number 79 by L. Hartley. And Stanley did the writing once again. Oh, I should also mention that these are uh, not the issues that were cover dated for August 1961. Um, they're the ones that actually came out in August 1961. They went by the sale dates, not by the cover dates. Uh, so what here we have the... Since this is a basically focusing on the Fantastic Four, um, they have the plot uh, synopsis for Fantastic Four number one as it was originally written by Stan Lee. So that's cool. Kind of enjoyed looking through that and comparing it to the finished product to see uh, just what Stan Lee provided and then what Jack Kirby provided. Cool. And then there's an article uh, by Stan Lee that was written in 1974 about uh, creating the Fantastic Four. And then there's an article by uh, Mark Evanier um, that talks about the day everything changed, August 8th, 1961. So that must be the date that Fantastic Four came out or something, where they decided to do it. And then they reprint a couple of uh, posters, uh, painted posters uh, by Alex Ross. This one's by Alex Ross over here. This is Jack Kirby and... Uh, Dean White on this one that, you know, recreate the scene from the cover of Fantastic Four, number one. And then they just have an identification guide for the characters that are on the, uh, uh, the dust jacket. So, very cool. It's like 520 pages long. 
Uh, so pretty cool. I, I'm going to enjoy reading this. I, I like the concept. Uh, it's not quite the my the concept I want, but but it's pretty close. So uh, pretty cool stuff. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow. We'll we'll uh, get into some more books that I bought from. Uh, I got off the internet, and uh, so we got some more comics, just regular comics to go through starting tomorrow. So see you then. Thanks for watching. Hope you're having a good day.